what is CAD? So CAD is a computer aided design and drafting tool. It's a technology that we have been using for eons. Like I remember when I was in university, the first CAD program that I used uh, was AutoCAD. And it was actually to replace what my seniors used to do with their drafting boards and with their set squares and with the parallel bars. They, they drew these beautiful drawings. Everything was switching over to CAD. I'm, and I'm talking about 2003. That's when the CAD became really, really, really popular. Everybody was moving on to CAD. And I feel it's a great tool because it was a stepping stone in becoming something that's basic drawings, basic drafting to a very nicely drafted automated process. What I feel CAD is like a knife. You can do cutting with a knife, chopping with a knife, you can peel with a knife, you can do a lot of stuff, but it does not have specialized tools to perform specialized functions. So if you can see on the screen here, I can draw an elaborate floor plan with a CAD software, but I can also draw, let's say, drawing of um, a bus or maybe a tool part. So this is really amazing because CAD does give us flexibility to draw whatever we want on computer rather than drawing it by hand. It makes editing really easy and it's a great tool. However, in today's day and age, when we are progressing in every field, we need more than just 2D drawings. We need more information than dimensions. We need and labeling. And we need more information from the hard work that we are putting in all, all those drawings. So that's why BIM. So what happens is a lot of us, we associate BIM with a certain software. Uh, so to say Revit is a very, very popular software. And a lot of people think that if you know Revit, you know BIM, but that's not true. BIM is actually not a software, but it's a process. It's a process which uses an intelligent 3D model to process the architecture, engineering, and construction professionals tools to design more efficiently, tools to transmit information from one uh, professional or from one uh, discipline to the other and transmit the data from one office to the other in a very seamless way. The diagram that you can see right here, it is basically giving you an overview of how from my conceptual, in fact, from my programming to my operations and maintenance, how my BIM progresses and how it changes. Now, if I say broadly, without making it too complicated, I would say that if I have to do design and then analyze my design, then make my constructible design good enough that I can plan logistics with it, I can also use my same design model uh, and give it to my fabricators to fabricate. And the whole process can be used by uh, my facility managers to manage the facility that I have designed. I don't think I can use one tool to do it all. So that's why each of these stages, whether it's design, whether it's analysis, construction planning, fabrication, or ONM, all these stages need specialized tools. And BIM is aggregation of the process, aggregation of the process that moves from design to analysis, to construction, to fabrication, to ONM. And we have a lot of softwares. Like these are not even, I would say, 20% of the softwares that are on the screen that are BIM, BIM enabled softwares. Now, depending on what field you are in, if you're an architect, Revit or ArchidCAD would be like really popular with you. And even in, even in architecture, I have seen people who are working on infrastructure projects they're using MicroStation, MicroStation 3D, and Building Designer, all the Bentley products, because uh, Bentley is really good with infrastructure. Uh, when I have designed something and I want to analyze my structure, or I want to analyze my coordination, or I want to analyze my, my green building standards, or I want to analyze my loads, I move to analysis stage. And I use totally different softwares for that. When I have designed and I have analyzed and I have coordinated, I have switched over my model to the contractors, to the construction managers, and they use their own softwares like Archibus and Synchronize and, and all these softwares. 
plan their logistics, to plan how and when they will order their material, to do a simulation, to do every kind of planning that they need to do for their construction process, and similarly other softwares. Uh, but what is common in this process is transmitting of information. So information that starts from design and it moves to analysis and moves to construction and moves to fabrication. And finally, when my project is complete and I hand it over, my O&M team will use that same information for maintaining the building. I'll give you a very quick example. So let's say you designed an office building and this, that office building has certain kind of lighting fixtures. Now, my BIM model will have the information of where those lighting fixtures are. It would have the circuit diagrams. It, it will have um, all the ducts and everything that are required. Now, along with that information, what will also happen is I can add the vendor. I can add the warranties. I can add the energy star rating. I can add whatever information I want to add to that particular lighting fixture. So what happens is when from my design to my analysis, my information moves, then I know that this lighting fixture is going to cost me this much for energy. And then I can, I can suggest the replacement. Or if I'm a construction um, uh, engineer, I'm a project manager, or I'm a construction manager, I feel that this lighting fixture is it's going to um, not be there by the time we will fix it. So I can request a change that can we not use this lighting fixture and can we use another vendor for it. And similarly, all this information when it's passed on to my building maintenance, they can use this information to track down the tickets, track down the maintenance, track down the expenditure. If something is out of warranty or something needs a regular maintenance, there are softwares that can be used to track all of this. And when, when I achieve the whole process from design to operations, when I achieve this whole process, I have become an integral part of the BIM process.